we work uh, on many things. Among those is a smart contact based wallet called Not the Same. If you haven't tried it out, uh, I encourage you to try it out. Go to. Yeah, okay. That's okay. You go to uh, safe.nosis.io and it's available for Android uh, and iOS. And we're using regular uh, yeah, seek phrases to allow recovery of those accounts, but we want to go beyond that because, well, we all know the flaws of seek phrases. Um, I guess all of us have, have created many of those. Um, usually, there's like, you're using grid 39, and you usually get a random uh, list of 24 words, sometimes 12 words, depending on how much entropy the wallet provider wants to generate. And from this, you generate a private key based together with uh, an HD part, and from this, with public key and the address. And uh, people have been quite creative uh, about how they can uh, make this simpler. So, simple pros and yeah, cons about seed phrases. They are supposed to be secure, like we know they are secure, and they also allow us, based on this HD tree, to generate arbitrary amount of private keys from it, so we just have to theoretically only store one of those. However, we still have to do this one backup, and if we ever lose it, then we lose all access to all of those private keys. So this here is a nice tweet by Argent. <laughs> Ideally, we can really get rid of it. Uh, and uh, yeah, many have been trying to do so. So there have been really creative ways. And, and one of those teams actually tried to create a game. You know, you're in a game, you select some rooms, and you walk through those rooms, and Based on your action in this game, entropy is generated, and you just have to remember what kind of actions you did in this game, and then you can restore <laughs> <laughs> so access to your account. Great idea. Uh, it's actually, yeah, you should try it out, it's quite fun. Uh, another idea actually created with the Gnosis was map recovery. So uh, you would just select points of interest on the map, and if you select certain, like a certain amount, like, like five of those, then you're able to generate a private key based on those. Uh, and then one interesting idea was also just use emote icon, uh, emojis. So in Unicode there are over 2,000 emojis, and you could just use this instead of the word list, and it might be easier to remember emojis instead of just a list of words. So sounds all great, but there are of course big issues with it. So first of all, um, if the user is doing this, if the user is playing the game, or selecting emojis, or selecting points of interest, and it's quite likely that users will select similar points of interest, so you kind of reduce the randomness by just allowing the user to pick this. That's one big issue, so you will never know exactly like, if this is actually a secure setup or not. Uh, and secondly, of course, you still have to remember this, and if you don't remember those uh, 24 emojis, or if you don't remember the points of interest, <laughs> or like which room you picked in this game, then, well, X is lost. So we have to go beyond this, and um, fortunately, if we, that's probably one of the biggest advantages of using smart contract based accounts like you NoSafe know, is uh, that we can now uh, have this smart contract as a proxy between you and your interactions on Ethereum. And in the smart contract, we can define uh, alternative rules like access rights. And we use it for NoSafe for multisig, uh, but you can also use it to replace ownership of this multisig under certain conditions. And there are a couple of uh, ideas. So, one is it proves the loss of the private key by submit, by asking anyone to submit a deposit if they believe access was lost. And uh, only the owner of the multisig is able to claim this deposit. And if in a certain period of time no one's able to claim it, then this is seen as a proof that access has been lost because otherwise the owner would have taken this money. And then the one who submitted the deposit is able to replace his key. Sounds, also sounds like a great idea, however. Uh, there, of course, it's very critical in like how much time do you actually uh, allow to pass until someone's able to replace this. If you know someone goes on holidays and he doesn't have internet, then you can just make this deposit and claim access to this account if, the, if you know the other person is not able to react in time. Also, a problem of front running. If you do such a transaction on Ethereum, anyone can see it and eventually front run it uh, and try to yeah, claim your account. The other quite popular idea is using social recovery is basically creating another multisig, a threshold multi multisig, where uh, a number of your friends uh, can confirm that you lost access and then they allow you to replace and gain uh, access to your account again. Then the question is how reliable are, uh, are your friends? <laughs> Do you really trust them? Uh, also, uh, eventually they can be attacked, right? So if you actually just use another multisig for this, then you uh, would see like an on-chain multisig, then you would see who are the guardians like who are the ones protecting your account, and eventually 
they can be mapped to real persons. Uh, and uh, then if someone sees, oh, there's a lot of money in this account, they might be able to attack those uh, to try to make them collude and gain access to your account. One solution to this is uh, eventually threshold signatures. There's been a lot of work being done also uh, by Chainlink, and there are actually working uh, proof of concept for this. The idea is that instead of having different uh, Ethereum accounts being an on-chain multisig, you just uh, split the generation of um, of the Ethereum signature, uh, like the thing verified on Ethereum, among different parties, they can generate this valid uh, Ethereum transaction, and then they don't have to store the Ethereum addresses on on the uh, yeah on the blockchain. So there are also cons to it. Uh, for any change in the setup, you would have to do the ceremony again. And of course, if your if the uh, members are losing access to this uh, private key share and the threshold of people is losing this, then it's also access lost. So, summary is there is not yet a perfect solution, uh, but at least uh, there are some options to pick from. Ideally, you can combine some of them. Thank you very much.